joining us and good afternoon. Nice to see um, some of you back again. Um, thank you for joining us for this um, virtual um, question and answer and informational session for our upper elementary program. Um, my name is Kara Ebe Cook and um, I'll be hosting this from an admissions perspective, but I'm really happy and excited to introduce uh, my colleagues and some others here on our Montessori team. Um, so joining us this afternoon, we have uh, Ms. Petra Satter, who is one of our upper elementary guides. We have Nisha Hess, um, who also leads an upper elementary classroom. We have uh, Ms. Tanya Payton, who is an assistant in our upper elementary environment, as well as Mr. Daniel Windereth, who um, is also an assistant um, in Upper L. I also have joining us uh, Ms. Jess DiFrancesco, who is um, a lower elementary guide, so she can kind of help to answer any questions about the transition, any, anyone who has students moving from third year to fourth year. And then I also have uh, Ms. McCabe, Heather McCabe here with us as our Montessori director. So um, welcome to both our current families and um, applicant families that I see out here, but I'm gonna go ahead and let the team get started. So Ms. Hess, um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Cara. I appreciate your introduction. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am Nisha Hess. I am one of the upper elementary team that works with the fourth through sixth grade. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what it's like for a third grader to come into the classroom or a new family to come into a Montessori environment. Um, in Montessori, we focus, especially in elementary, the second plane child is what we are talking about. And that second plane goes from six years of age to about 12 years of age. We take the little bit older group here in the upper elementary, but their characteristics are very similar throughout that entire period. And so what we like to do in Montessori, we are a continuation of the lower elementary program, which means all of our teachers in lower and upper elementary are trained for that six to 12, that, that second plain child. So anything that your child is really advanced in that they've been working on in lower elementary, it makes a very seamless transition for us to pick up in upper elementary. So a lot of the works that they see, the materials on the shelf are all in conjunction with what they see in lower elementary. And the classroom is set up very similarly. We really try to meet that child, that second plane child and their characteristics. Those questions that they like to ask of why. We try to set up an environment that allows them to really explore the why of things. Um, their sense of justice is played out in the classroom. In upper elementary, it looks a little different than in lower. We have more meetings that are led by the, teach, uh, by the, the students. For example, we have a student council oftentimes in upper elementary classrooms. Um, so it's more of that group work that you see in lower elementary, but it's more of the children leading that in upper elementary. We like to take um, those abstract ideas, those sensorial materials that they see in lower elementary, and we really push them to abstraction in um, upper elementary. So we take the, the sensorial that they work on and that foundation that they have, and we really push them to abstraction. So they'll use less materials, even though they are offered for them in the classroom. Second plain characteristics of, of the elementary age child is really focused on great work and sparking their imagination. And that really comes from the cosmic education that Dr. Montessori dedicated her life to. Um, cosmic education is we give the child the whole universe. We start with the big picture and we let them dive into that however they choose. We give them that freedom to choose. And that is very, um, that is very much where we follow the child, which is what she talked about when she was in, uh, talked about the younger children following the child. We do that in elementary as well. We follow the direction in which they're going and we help spark their imagination in a lot of ways. In upper elementary, we really focus uh, on the, that abstraction, but we really focus on the cause and the effect, the greater sense of responsibility they, they feel. And we work on that with them with record keeping, time management. Um, and that's where those ideas that they started in lower elementary really are focused on and finalized so that that way they're prepared for whatever comes next. Uh, the environment is set up to follow them 
whatever with so many different things, but we also have the outdoor environment. The going out program is a big part of upper elementary. Now, as you can imagine, we, we don't know what that's gonna look like um, come fall, what the going out program is, but that is also a huge part of what we do in upper elementary is we promote them going out and getting that information. So we wanna spark those seeds of imagination in the classroom and then get them out into the local community. Again, we'll see where that takes us next year, but that's a, a really big important part of our upper elementary classroom. We, like I said, we really focus on time management and record keeping in upper elementary so that they can see the cause and effect of their work that they do. If you have a student who spends all morning working strictly on math, um, they'll be able to record that and see that and then maybe we can talk up to them about well what would be a better way to balance your day now we all know that math is good but so is music so we want to make sure that they work on balancing their day we also give them a lot of room for artistic expression because of their imagination and that's one of their second pin characteristics we really want them to be as creative as possible and so we give them a lot of opportunity to create that really big work in creative ways. Um, so it may not necessarily be a book report assignment. It might be that they decide to create a skit and act out the story of the book um, or create a song about the story of the book. So we, we really want to give them that creativity. And they love to work in groups, which you should see in lower elementary already. But in upper elementary, you will find that they are extremely extremely social and they spend all day um, talking to each other and working in large group presentations as well as group work together and debating and arguing and going back and forth and trying to figure out what they really believe. Um, if you get an opportunity to come into an upper elementary classroom, you will find it to be quite noisy and a little chaotic, um, but there is purpose behind all of that noise and, and chaos. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. We don't quite know yet what next year is going to bring, but uh, I do encourage you, if given the opportunity, to please, please come and observe an upper elementary classroom at any time that you get an opportunity. It's pretty amazing to see all of the big work and the ideas that they have. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and a big part of our upper elementary program and has been previously focused on sixth grade, but Ms. Satter and I are hoping to extend the program um, and really focus a lot more on MMUN and bringing the idea of model, the model United Nations through Montessori to them. It really helps with their sense of justice. These kids have great ideas and they want to fix the world. And this gives them a really great outlet in which to actually be able to do that. So the sixth grade program has been such a success for us over the years that we're hoping to expand the program in the next few years and really start incorporating some younger students as well as older students. So we're looking forward to that as well for the future. Um, I think that might be my spiel. Is that <laughs> um, Ms. Satter, would you like to show the environment at this time? Sure thing. So my lovely assistant, Mr. Wendrick, is going to walk around the environment with his iPhone here as I talk. So just give him a moment to connect on his phone as I talk. Um, so yes, I'm in the environment right now. I'm in our, our math area, as maybe you can see. Um, so our environment, um, we have basically all of the same materials that they have in the lower elementary environment, um, which is really awesome because it makes that transition a lot easier. Um, so Mr. Wendris is in our, um, let's see, geography area right now. So all of those concrete materials um, in our geography area. So like I said, we have all the same, uh, basically all the same materials as they would have um, in lower L. So we really have that continuation. Um, so geography, um, you know, space of matter. Uh, this is biology. This is zoology shelf. Um, and then we also do botany. Um, in Montessori, we actually focus a lot more on the botany uh, because, you know, Maria Montessori and Mario, her son, you know, said that children already are interested in animals, so let's get them interested in plants. So we do a lot of work with the plants um, for our biology work um, in elementary. Um, also, right next to Mr. Wendrick is our chart box. 
that's super interesting. The large impressionistic impressionistic charts that we use um, to teach various concepts. We use these um, all the time to teach different uh, things. And they're, uh, the charts are some of my favorite materials in the classroom. Um, let's see here, we're moving along. Um, we sometimes use our computers. I'm using one over here now, um, but we do have computers available as we see that technology is very important in our world. Um, so we incorporate it when possible. Um, moving along, there's our music area. So we include music as much as we can. Next year, we are inviting a music teacher uh, back to our school, uh, but we also incorporate music during the day. This year, I think for hours every morning, we were hearing students playing those xylophones and tone bars. So uh, it's pretty much constant in the classroom, so it can be a little loud, but um, there's our bookshelf. So a big thing in upper elementary is focusing on further research. Um, so we really like to, you know, we give them the keys to exploration and then we want them to go further and do these big research projects, um, group projects with their peers um, to really take things further. Um, Moving along, we have a, I have a nice living room area in my room. Um, we encourage having pets in our room. We normally have a class bunny up here, but he's at home uh, now. Um, we have the language area right there. Um, so we have, again, the same language materials, the grammar boxes, um, but, you know, we usually take that further. So for those students that haven't been in Montessori, they may get those introductory lessons, but we're able to really take that further uh, with those students who were in lower L and have already had those lessons. Um, and then we can move along to math area. Um, and yet again, same materials. Um, and usually uh, we would introduce a concept uh, with the material um, and then we usually move through it a lot faster to the abstraction with those students in upper L. Um, so we still have the full set of materials but you know we introduce it and then when we move to that abstract they can still refer to it and it's really nice for them to be able to refer to that material that they know um, but then they're able to kind of abstractly do it on paper um, you know which then you know once we get to the end of um, sixth grade, then that, you know, we start to prepare them for what's next, which is the PGIA. Um, so we have all of our mathematics area, um, and then geometry as well. Um, so our geometry area, uh, just the same as math, uh, just able to take those concepts further um, with everything there. Um, we also offer different things like sometimes we do cooking in the classroom if available so we have lots of cooking set up in here <laughs> thank you mr wondrous um so we can offer cooking um you know we really like to follow the interests of the child um he's also showing you yep there's our kitchen area we also have a bunch of science stuff there you go um to help with our geography work there um and then we also have our art shelves um, again, which we're able to use those art materials, you know, to really connect with any subject. Right behind me, there's a poster of some geography work. Um, so, you know, we use art and engage that in all the subjects. Um, cosmic education, all the subjects are kind of interconnected. Um, and then uh, history is the only subject I didn't touch on. We do have our history show the left there as well. Um, so that's kind of a general tour of the classroom. Upper elementary, we're blessed with these amazing, beautiful, large classrooms. Um, the panel of the room there for you. So yeah, that's a general tour of our classroom. Um, any Anything that I didn't touch on? Anything that we want to cover more or any questions? So for anybody out there, feel free to either um, pose a question um, out to the group, or if you want to use um, the chat box, that feature, um, you're more than welcome to, to do that as well. I will also let everyone know that um, not only um, are we recording this session, so you can review it for your reference, but we'll also be sending out 
um, some links to some videos, which would include um, some more of the educational instructional piece so that you have some more context for the things that um, Ms. Satter and Ms. Hess are, are discussing. So those will be um, a follow up to this session today. So I see your questions are about computer education in upper elementary, um, and that's really evolving right now. And we, uh, you know, right now we are doing a lot on our computers, obviously with this distance learning. Upper L, um, for the first time, has their own email accounts, um, and we're doing Google Classroom. And so it's a lot more of us directly communicating with the students, uh, whereas uh, Lower L, you know, I think most of the communication goes, you know, through the parent email. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing that now um, and we're still kind of developing where we're going to go next year. Um, typically, for computer use in the upper elementary, um, we have them for research purposes. So when they're doing a research process and they've exhausted all other resources, the books, the library, you know, other experts in the community, uh, we allow them to use it for research. Um, we do have them type papers and things like that, especially with that model UN program. We're using computers a lot for typing. Um, so we do actually encourage all of our students in upper elementary to do typing on a weekly basis. We have a typing program that we have here at school. Um, so we do encourage that in the classroom. Uh, anything else, Ms. Hess, on computer ed? Uh, besides the weekly typing where we're trying to learn them how to, trying to teach them how to type properly, we do also work, um, like Ms. Ms. Satter said, in normal classroom, we do, they only have limited access to the computer. With what we're doing now, we have broadened kind of our aspect of the computer usage. We're including things like digital citizenship as part of the program that what they're doing now, and I envision that we will continue with that. Um, of course, we've gotten some experts for internet safety as well. So we are talking to them now that they have been um, put on the computers and depending on how we move forward, we are looking at limiting their computer usage, but also making sure that we're teaching them valuable computer tools so that, that anytime they are on, com on the computer, they're doing it in a good way, a mindful way. So we are incorporating that as well. I don't know what the future will bring. So we, I imagine it, it will be some sort of mix of those things at, kind of thrown in together. Thank you both. And we have another question out there. Can you give a basic overview of a typical day in the classroom? Uh, yes, a, a typical day in the classroom um, up until early March would have been um, the kids come in between 7.45 and 8 a.m. Usually they go right to work uh, after we've had, you know, after we've worked together as a group and started out, we usually will start at the beginning of the school year in meetings together, sort of group meetings until we all have kind of acclimated. Then we will work together where they come in, they'll get started. Uh, we usually put up the lessons and the times that we're hoping to do those lessons so that the children can plan their day. They get their work journals out or record keepers. Um, depending on the child, they'll call them one or the other, which is a composition notebook. They start with writing the date then they usually, there's a lot of conversing with their friends during this time. Uh, they will, you know, figure out what the first work they want to do is. And they'll write down the time, they'll go get the work, they'll have an argument with a friend, then they'll keep moving on. Uh, so they work, they have a morning work cycle from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we're pretty strict about that. We don't like to interrupt that too frequently. Usually about 11 o'clock, we pull them together, try to touch base with them in the morning, get ready for recess and lunch. They are expected um, to pack their own lunches as well as set up for lunch. So they set up the tables, they get out the placemats, the, the, the silverware, the plates, they pick where they want to set. And then from 1130 to 12 is our recess time, which is their outdoor time. When they come back in, they wash their hands. We have it usually um, just a moment of gratitude in some way, and then they start lunch. And then lunch is, you know, their time from 1230 to one o'clock. After lunch, they wash their dishes, they get ready. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they have Spanish. After 12.30, I'm sorry, their lunch is from 12 to 12.30. I think I might have said that incorrectly. From 12 to 12.30. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they have Spanish from 12.30 to 1.20, I believe, or 1.15. And so that they leave at that time. And then when they come back, they have their afternoon work cycle from about 1.30 to 3 o'clock at dismissal. 
on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we don't have Spanish time, we usually do something, uh, I do hand time where I read out loud. I believe Ms. Satter has done some various activity of that where we work together with the students working on developing listening skills. Um, and then Fridays we like to take our afternoons off and work together as one giant upper elementary team. We go down to the solar awning and we play a lot of community games. Some of those might be working. Um, there are a lot of team building games. There are a lot of just having some fun as one upper elementary community. It's very important for Ms. Satter and I that we work together as one upper elementary community. So that's sort of our Friday fun day afternoon that we have. Uh, we also do sports one day a week. And of course, during their morning work cycle or their afternoon work cycle, any number of things could be happening. They could be visiting the library. They could be taking a walk around campus, looking for different types of roots or fruit. Um, they could be working in the garden, cooking. There's lots and lots of uh, things that they do outside because we're so blessed with this amazing, beautiful campus as well as this island. So there's a lot of things that they do outside that we, we've been focused on the inside environment. Please know that there's a lot going on outside as well. I think one, one small piece of this is just cleanup time at the end of the day, too. Uh, we really support that uh, independence and then having the accountability right there. There's the 22 little humans that are in this room all day using it. Uh, in which they, uh, you know, clean up our environment. Am I unfrozen? Sorry, I heard I froze. Um, Internet's a little unstable, my bad. Um, so yeah, we all work together at the end of the day to clean our environment. Um, you know, and they really in upper elementary, uh, we encourage them to pretty much do it all. They vacuum the rugs, they sweep the floors, they refill our spray bottles that have our disinfectant. Um, they're wiping the shelves, you know, so they really, they're taking care of the environment um, really a lot in upper elementary. Of course, in the future, uh, we are going to have all of the disinfecting needs taken care of by professionals, uh, but the children do take care of their environment as well. So. Thank you both. Um, another question from um, the audience um, about homework. So are the students starting to be assigned homework in upper elementary? Can you speak about that? Um, yes. Uh, Homework is, in the upper elementary, not something that we really focus on. Um, we, we focus on their work at home. However, having said that, in sixth grade, then we start talking to them and preparing them for the world outside of Montessori. So in sixth grade, that is sort of the exception where we start sprinkling in a few assignments. Um, we started it in Christmas this year with our sixth graders where we asked that they do an hour and a half of IXL a week just to get the idea of having to be responsible for doing something at home. Um, now, everything has flipped around a little bit, as we all know. So I do know that we're not still, we're still not assigning homework, but I do know that some of my kids will do their work in the evening. Um, but I, I think that's more of their schedule for the school day. But we, our expectation is the students are contributing at home, whatever that looks like. If that means taking care of the, the pets or doing the laundry or making dinner once a week, um, we certainly, that's, that's their work for home up until sixth grade and then sixth grade looks a little different. Thank you. Other questions from uh, the audience? No, been some very thorough presenters this afternoon. Um, any, any final comments or thoughts? I know a lot of people out there are, are a part of our school community. So, um, you know, we've all, all already been in very close touch. I'm so happy to, su to support um, or talk you through anything that might come up. Um, but if there's nothing else or no other final thoughts to share, okay, all right. Well, um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, reach out with any needs, questions, comments, or concerns. Um, like I said, I will be following up with some um, specific links of, of lessons and things for you to view so you get more of an idea of what it's like um, in our upper elementary environment. But until then, um, we wish you the best. Take care, stay safe, and um, let us know what we can do to support you. Thank you all for, thanks, the, for the everybody.
Thank you.